What's up, Gearholics out there? I got a new review for you guys. Today I'm going to be covering the La Sportiva Tarantulas. Uh, these are obviously made by La Sportiva, which is a climbing company, uh, and these are obviously climbing shoes. These are not outdoor shoes. You do not want to go trail running or anything in these shoes. Uh, these are specifically for climbing outdoors or indoors, more specifically indoors than outdoors. Uh, but you could eventually fold these into an outdoor activities. Um, what do I think about these shoes? Um, well, well, I guess we'll get to that. You know, I'll really give you guys the general overview of what I like, what I don't like about the shoe. Uh, and then obviously I'm going to fill you guys in with all the technical, technical specs of the actual shoe. So that way you guys have a good idea of either A, how to buy a new pair of shoes if you're a new climber, or B, if you just want to hear all the technical jargon that a lot of us climbing gear nut heads like to talk about, uh, or just gear heads in general. Um, or if you just want to be knowledge. Uh, well, Rambo welcomes you to my channel. If this is the first time uh, you watching any of my stuff, welcome. Uh, I do a lot of gear reviews, and I try to I try to be as honest as possible. And I am not the foremost expert on on all gear. I just give my general opinion, and I do try to fill in with every technical spec that I can. And I try to knowledge myself and others on on you know everyday outdoor gear or 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 knives or whatever. So uh, if you want, you can watch my other reviews. That's great. But I'll I, I'll I'll digress onto the actual features. So the La Sportiva Tarantulas, I've had these shoes for probably three years. Uh, I've been climbing for quite a long time too. I want to say I've been climbing for five, almost five years now. And I've had these shoes for exactly three years, uh, uh, maybe a little bit longer. I, I want to say it's right around the three year mark. Um, these shoes are pretty good shoes. I, I'll, I'll give you guys the technical specs now. Um, each shoe I believe is 9.3 ounces. Um, and it's got a leather, a leather slash synthetic, uh, synthetic upper, which is really nice. Uh, so you can kind of see the synthetic upper. This helps kind of wick away moisture off the top of your foot, uh, but it does nothing for the lower portions of your foot because there is le leather on the inside. There is leather on the inside of the shoe. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Uh, but uh, the the actual <clears throat> the actual fit uh, is very comfortable. Uh, it's a comfortable fit. It is very like almost worn in when you put them on for the first time. Uh, and it does have low, uh, low uh, asymmetry uh, uh, feeling uh, as far as fit goes. So that's really nice. Um, let's see. Uh, the midsole, which is this portion, this area right here, is actually 1.8 millimeters thick, uh, which is really great. Uh, and the sole, the sole of the actual shoe is actually 5 millimeters thick. And it's, uh, it's made from, uh, it's called Friction RS uh, Rubber. Uh, and I have found it to operate decent. It's a decent rubber. Um, obviously, these shoes come in, I, or I've only been able to find these shoes in one color, which is kiwi and gray, or green and gray. Uh, and that's fine. I mean, if, if you're an everyday, you know, if you're just like going into climb, it should be that big of a, a deal. Uh, climbing shoes aren't really the prettiest shoes. Some of them are really ugly. Some of them are really actually really cool looking. Uh, uh, but as far as Sportiva goes, they're they're almost real funky colors and sometimes... Uh, you know, so there are there are certain aspects of their other shoes that I like and I dislike. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a very simple person and I like to have simplistic shoes. Uh, the shoes do actually come with lace ups or they have Velcro, so they have two different options for you. I went the lace ups. Uh, I went with the lace ups because I feel like they give a tighter fit. And if for something if something happens outdoors uh, and if you tear off one of your tabs from your Velcro. You can't replace it, but if you tear like a lace or something, you can always replace your laces outdoors uh, in a in a survival situation. Well, not that you'd be surviving, uh, but if, if something were to happen to your shoe and it get caught and it gets caught and you tear the lace, you can always fix it right there and then with like a piece of 550 cord or whatever, and your shoes are good to go. Um, not that that'll ever really happen, and not that I've ever really even heard of that happening, but that option is still there, and that's why I originally bought these shoes was mostly for a tighter fit. Um, so, and, and you can get, you can achieve that with laces, uh, sometimes with Velcro, you can't always achieve the tightness that you, that you always need. Um, but that doesn't mean that some, some other brands and some other shoes can be really tight with Velcro. So that's just one of those options you guys can think about, uh, that I'm trying to offer you guys, uh, in, in my insight into the shoe. Um, the, let's talk, go, let's go back to the color real quick. I said it, this, this only comes in one color. I don't understand why Sportiva only sells the shoe in one color. It would be kind of nice, and they would make a lot more money if they were to sell this color, uh, sell these in different colors. Uh, I don't understand why uh, a lot of climbing companies don't sell shoes in other colors. 
Uh, and what I've been told, and this is true for, I find all, almost every shoe brand, is that not all these shoes fit the same. So even though you wear like, like say like a size 11 in Sportivas, sometimes there are other Sportivas that are size 11s uh, that, that don't fit the same way that this shoe fits. And it, it's not, it's not because it's not because uh, you know your 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 shoe size changes. It's because I think the make and model of each shoe is individual, uh, and so they're not all the same. And so it's one thing to keep in mind. So if you go on and or if you go into REI and you want to try on a pair of shoes, uh, I think I picked these up at REI uh, for eighty dollars, uh, and I think they're still being sold at eighty dollars. So it's a relatively inexpensive climbing shoe, uh, and eighty dollars being inexpensive is actually it's, it's true. Like that's an inexpensive climbing shoe. Um, if you pay any less from that, you're just getting the, the bottom dollar. You're, you're getting the best deal ever. Uh, I've, I've heard of people paying $60 for shoes, and I mean, that's just a miracle. Uh, most really decent quality mid, mid-range mid shoes are $120. So expect to spend some money if you're, if you're wanting to upgrade above this uh, with other shoes. But uh, I, I honestly feel like this shoe fits a wide variety of roles. Uh, I think that you can do uh, a little bit of crack climbing with these shoes. It's obviously not the, the more preferred shoe. Uh, you can definitely do sport climbing with the shoes if you really wanted to. I mean, you can press any shoe into any role really in climbing. Uh, you just, there are certain shoes for certain jobs. And I would say the primary job of this shoe is a indoor climbing shoe. Uh, you know, it functions really well in the indoor climbing industry uh, where, uh, you know, where you're gonna be climbing on, uh, you know, plastic, uh, you know, humping plastic as they say in the industry terms. Um, the overall feel of the shoe, it feels really good when you slide it on for the first time. I went with 11s. I, I, my street, my, street, I'm sorry, I went with 10s, not 11s. Uh, my street shoe size, I wear 11 and a half to 12s, and uh, this shoe particularly is a 10 in 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 the USA. It's a 10. Europe, it's a 43, and UK, it's a nine. Uh, so, I mean, obviously those shoe sizes vary. So if you're in, uh, yeah, if you're in a, a different country. You know, I apologize for not giving you guys uh, different technical specs in, in, in grams or anything or any other uh, formation. But I, I feel as if I feel as if uh, it, the shoe fit me really well, but I should have gone with a smaller size. I think a nine and a half in the shoe would have fit me perfectly. Um, of course, like I said before, not all the sizes are exactly the same. So that nine and a half may have been a little bit different, uh, you know, uh, and I haven't tried on I, because... I haven't tried on a nine and a half, but when I've been back to the store and I try on these exact shoes in the exact same size, it feels tighter than this shoe. And I understand there's an amount of stretch within these shoes because of the leather insides. They have leather, so because they have leather on the on the inside uh, of the actual component of the shoe, it does have a, a it does have a decent amount of stretch to it, uh, and it will it will stretch out over time with usage. Um, and I have found that that is very true with this shoe. It does stretch out and it does feel good. Um, just make sure that when you go and fit it, that you fit it just right. Uh, and apparently when you, when you do climbing shoes, what you're supposed to do is you put your, sh your foot in the actual shoe. Um, and it's always good to start off with a half size from your street shoe. And then you kind of work down or work up based on that. Uh, or at least that's what I found that works for me. And uh, if it's tight enough, you, you always know that you get a, a you're gonna have a perfect fit shoe because it should be tight enough that it's uncomfortable because what you want is your you want your your feet to actually curl in the bottom of the shoe uh, at the end of the shoe in the toe box uh, you, the toe box you, you know your foot your foot should kind of curl over and all your toes should be kind of crunched together um, but they shouldn't be so smashed in there that it's so uncomfortable uh, you just want them tightly packed in there uh, so that way when you step on really hard corners you can actually get a decent uh, toe in, uh, and you can you can you can edge on on smaller uh, jibs and uh, and and crimps and different things that you're going to be pushing off of uh, when you're actually climbing. Um, I actually did blow a hole in my Sportivas uh, because I you know I'm rough on my shoes and I probably have a sloppy climbing style uh, to some. Uh, I feel like I climb pretty good, but you know uh, you know you always think that you're a good singer in the shower too, but that doesn't necessarily make you you know. Queen Latifah or whatever, uh, but what? <laughs> that's kind of a weird, a weird comparison. But anyways, um, I just feel as if the toe box feels really good on these shoes. Um, I fit my shoes perfectly. Uh, I fit my shoes perfectly, but I did feel like over time they did get, they did get, they did get looser. And so that is one object that you need to keep in mind: is your shoes will loosen up, even if you have synthetic 
uh, inside, you know, a synthetic uh, uh, sole on the inside of the shoe. Uh, it will stretch a little bit, but it won't stretch as much as a leather. So it's always a good idea to have a leather inside, even though it does get smellier. Uh, and sometimes synthetic insides can be quite smelly too. I know that the uh, the 510, uh, I know that the the 510 Rogue uh, shoe, which is a, a different, obviously 510 is a different brand. Uh, their 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 rogue is apparently uh, pretty predominant with being very smelly shoe. Um, my shoe doesn't really stink that bad. I mean, it stinks, but it's not going to be stinking that bad. Uh, that's another thing you need to remember. If you're if you're first getting into climbing and you want to buy a new pair of shoes, your shoes are going to smell. Uh, so the best thing to do with shoes is to uh, actually when you after you get done climbing them, climbing in them for the day. Hang them on a carabiner, you know, on these these two little back straps right here. Hang them on the carabiner and let them hang out and let them air dry. Uh, you know, don't put them in the sun or anything, and don't try to wash them. So that's just going to ruin the shoe. Uh, you can you can maybe spray something or put something on the inside to kind of keep down the smell and and uh, kill the 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 bacteria that's been growing on the inside of your shoe. Um, but you know, it's always a good idea to keep. Uh, uh, you know, to keep these as dry as possible, which helps, which helps, you know, keep the smell down. Uh, so whenever you get done at the end of the day, don't just throw these in your gym bag or whatever, uh, uh, because they're just going to sit there and, and swell and I mean, and stink and, and the bacteria is just going to grow because it's in a, a warm, moist environment. So you want to let them dry out as much as you can. Um, I usually, I usually spray some stuff on the inside. I have like some foot stuff that you can buy at any generic Walmart or whatever and you just kind of spray it in there and it just kind of kills some of the smell uh, and I don't try to overdo it because um, That can ruin it may ruin the inside of the shoe. Uh, I just do it every now and then uh, Just to kind of keep the smell down because uh, there's nothing there's nothing more atrocious than going inside your backpack And it smells like you know complete You know death from shoes, you know, it smells like a garbage can um, but uh, my, my general overview of this of this is I wish they came in better colors. I wish I had more colors for this shoe. Um, the the de the rubber is decent on here. Uh, it, it is not the greatest rubber. I, I think there are other brands that I find that, that appeal to my taste a little bit more. Uh, and uh, I really have enjoyed these shoes. I, I do highly recommend these shoes for beginners who are, who are just starting out. Um, they're really great shoes. And Sportiva does a really good job of making these shoes really easily, easily accessible, especially because you can buy them at REI. And you can get them online for 80 bucks, and the the prices are usually stable across the board at the $80 range. I wouldn't pay any more for that for this shoe. Um, and uh, honestly, I feel like it's a kind of a steep price to pay. Uh, you know, obviously, I would like to see the shoe cheaper, uh, and, uh, but you know, for what you're for what you're getting, you're getting a lot of shoe. Um, I a, a lace problem. I, I know a lot of people have laces or they don't like laces. Another lace problem that I found is that I don't like it when the laces pop out. So what I did was I went ahead and I tied a knot at the end of my shoelace, uh, and that one took up a lot of a shoelace, and then two kind of keeps the shoe lace from actually coming out. So I can actually fully unthread my whole shoe and just pop it off real easy, and then slip it on real quick, uh, especially if I'm doing like quick routes or if I'm doing boulder problems, and you know I don't want to I don't want to have my shoe on for very long, and because it's such a tight fit, I don't really need to worry about it popping off necessarily. Um, the heel does fit my heel really well, but I have heard people say that it doesn't hit, it doesn't fit their heel all the way. Uh, that's one thing to try on. Each shoe that you find in the in the climbing world is going to fit everybody differently because everybody has a different foot. So they try to generalize shoes as much as they can. Um, if you have if you have uh, narrow feet like I do, uh, this shoe does actually have a little bit of a uh, uh, or if you have a high arch, it does have a little bit of an arch here. Uh, that is nice to have. I, I do like my shoes to fit. A little tight. It does have a, a decent arch in there. Uh, I've, I've actually put on some shoes that didn't have any arch support and I was just kind of like really uncomfortable. So this has a, a moderate arch support which is not bad. Uh, and like I said before the rubber is okay. I did blow a hole in this. I'll probably have these maybe resold or something one day but I have better shoes right now that I want to use uh, for climbing and I honestly feel like these are great shoes to have especially if you're a beginner uh, and they, they really do they really do do the trick and the job for for climbing indoors. Um, and if you want to take them outdoors, you're more than welcome to. Uh, you know there are better shoes out there for outdoor activities. Uh, but uh, in my opinion, these these can be pressed into that role very easily without any problems. Um, you know, just be careful with them. And obviously, if you're a new climber, uh, uh, you know, be safe and and really learn as much as you can from the climbers around you. Uh, the more experienced climbers around you, 
And, uh, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions uh, and, and always try to improve uh, your climbing abilities, uh, especially when you're when you're using your, your footwork. Uh, you know, footwork is the key to climbing. It really is. If you have solid feet, you can get solid hands. And, uh, you know, it'll really help you in the long run. And, and I feel like I feel like I've learned a lot, not necessarily from reading or 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 doing research or, or learning online or reading uh, uh, things online. I've learned from the people around me, and I've been very, I've been very, uh, I've been very fortunate that I've had really smart, intelligent, uh, strong-willed, and and knowledgeable people that that climb on a regular basis and that do a lot of outdoor activity that they can help me fill or fill me in on the things that I need to know. So don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid to kind of learn more, uh, you know, about climbing. Uh, I really don't like it when I see people in the gym and they act like they're, they're hot shit and they think they can climb really well. And then, uh, you know, you know, they really do end up suck and, you know, they end up sucking and they don't want any opinions or they don't want, they don't want to hear you give them beta, uh, because they, they don't like, you know, they want to figure it out for themselves. And that's understandable. I mean, some people, you know, some people, are just like that. Uh, but I feel like the climbing community has always been really generous with me. And uh, that's just one thing I think we should stick together as a climbing community. You know, we should always just care about each other and really respect your elders and respect people who are who are older climbers, uh, just because they, they do end up knowing a lot more than you. And uh, they can really help you in the long run. With that being said, and I kind of got that out of the way. These are great shoes. You should really get a pair if you don't have a pair and you're looking for a new pair of shoes. They're decent. They're decent gym shoes. Um, they're going to really give you a lot of run for your money. Um, I've had mine for three years and they just blew out like probably, you know, two months ago. And that's, that's a lot of climbing to be, to be done. And I climb at least three or four times a week, you know, if, if not a little bit less, cause you know, obviously life gets crazy, but, uh, you know, that's a lot of climbing to get out of these shoes. And, and that's, that's really important. Um, so that's my review though of the, of the La Sportiva Tarantulas. And uh, you know my name's my name's uh, my name's Zach, and uh, you know obviously this is my channel, and I'm I'm a gearaholic. So uh, if you guys have any questions, or if you you don't want to make a comment or anything, you're more than welcome to. Um, that's all I got for now, and uh, hopefully I'll come up with you guys uh, with more more shoe reviews in the future. Uh, but you guys have a good day, and uh, try not to uh, try not to hurt yourselves. All right, Zach out.